Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode. We continue discussing problems that we talked about in our preview. But first, I think we want to mention a problem that was in the last episode. Yes, I don't think we make it clear to our, our audience what do we mean by the symmetry also leads to the factor, right? So, Vinke, do you want to go ahead and tell us what's going on? Sure. So the problem we had last week was um, this equation, the square root of x plus a equals this x squared minus a, and we're trying to find the solutions for x in terms of a. Um, <clears throat> so what we did initially was we talked about squaring it, um, and found this does not lead to a solution very easily, um, unless you treat it as a quadratic in a. Mm -hmm. So we solved it that way. But then we mentioned um, at the end of our last episode our that you could also do this by looking at the graphs of this function and this function. So I'll just clarify that here. Um, if we look at the graph of x squared minus a, this is a parabola, right? It's just y equals x squared, and we shift it down by a. So that's this blue parabola here. And then if we look at the graph of the square root of x plus a, that is this half of the parabola. Um, the other half is negative to that, uh, because the square root is always positive. So now what we're trying to do is set these two functions equal. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the points where these two, um, where, where this parabola will intersect with this graph. Um, and to find that, um, if we look at this equation really closely, y equals the square root of x plus a, and we square both sides, we get y squared equals x plus a. That is actually what we did, because we squared that too. Yeah, right? so we get yeah. x plus a. And then we rearrange it, we get x equals y squared minus a. So the key is this equation and this equation are basically the same one except x and y are swaps. We have inverse functions. Yes. And that also means that they're symmetric about this line x equals y. Yes. So that means that if there's going to be a solution to this equation, it has to be where um, it has to be on the line x equals y. So that's where we have that last step over there. Yeah. So right. this. So, the, so two of those solutions we know comes from the intersection of the line volume of x. So that tells us x squared minus x minus a divides that bottom end. And then that helps us to factor that too. Right? Okay. And then from there we still have to check for the extraneous Yes. So in this episode, I think we are going to change our format today slightly differently. Instead of we do a few uh, for each problem, we have a video clip and we have a discussion. I think we can almost put it up into two parts. Is the first part is we are going to give an easier version of a harder problem in the set, and we talk about them. And then in the second part, we talk about those harder problems. Okay. Uh, Yannick, you want to talk about one? Okay, sure. So, so in problem one, uh, six people build a human pyramid, which Sets is, and we want uh, each people to each person to be supported by two persons that are heavier than him. So, so for this reference, I just use the weight one through six to rep like, represent these people. So obviously, this this uh, previous person stand on top. So I say a equals one, and then the second previous person must be right beneath him somewhere. This other B or C. So since it's still special at this point, we can set B equals two. I love those times two here because uh, in order to remind us that we, we do it at the end in this case. So if b goes two, then the c has to be zero or four because if c goes five or six, then it cannot have a two heavier person to support it. So if c goes three, then the base of the value is three put on top, so d f can be any permutation of four by six, so it's three factorial. And if it's if c if it's c goes four, can you write that pyramid a little bit more carefully so we can see better? Okay, so if it's c plus 4, uh, we have a pyramid like the, which is like 1, 2, 4, the b, b, uh -huh. Yes, and, and, then, and then we see that 3 must go on, go to d because 3 cannot support 4. So if once, once d is 3, there are only two choices for d and f. Uh -huh. Yes, so, so we have 3 factorial plus 2 factorial, which is 8. And then remember that we both have times 2 here, so we both by 3 and we get. 16 power of minus. Uh -huh. Times 2 is b and c are completely symmetrical, yes. right? So b equal to 2 and c equal to 2. 
to us. So this clearly gives us some help on our fun, right? Hopefully our audience are interested enough now trying to solve number five of them, right? And I'm going to talk about the next set of two problems, and then we will come back to revisit them again. 